But then sometimes our trauma, our deep-rooted painting gets the best of us. And I know one of my vulnerable sides of me is that I, I give people too much credit sometimes and I have sometimes an over-trust in people. So once that's broken, a second time, and then a third time, and then a fourth time, and then a fifth time, and then and then there's then you just stop counting. Everyone has a breaking point, and I broke, and I broke, and there's this narrative spun about me that I'll share right now, this narrative is spun that this person couldn't give me what I wanted. And that's when I realized this person never really knew me then. Because all I wanted was trust and unconditional love and then everything else is extra and had I had that I would have not had to possibly want other things I don't know so this narrative got spun about me that I wanted other things and I wanted things that this my ex-husband couldn't give me and that's just not true I, I don't know where or how that turned into a narrative for myself but i'm that's not my narrative and that wasn't at all what i wanted because i never saw us apart even in the midst of the pain and the trust issue I never saw it apart so I think that it makes you realize that maybe there's something deeper going on here that maybe you just didn't see maybe you just didn't see and when I broke I just I couldn't do it anymore you know so I left I left because it was becoming an unhealthy thing for myself because I saw myself deteriorating at a very rapid pace. And I had to be strong for my children. I had to be the best mother I could be for them. And right after that, after that, I exited the marriage and moved on my own again two marriages as a single mom and me and me and the kids my health issues started again again after all this time again and I ignored them I knew they were coming I felt them I felt I told you I've been going through these physical symptoms for over two years and I knew they were there. You know, I knew my memory started first. It's the memory. I was becoming forgetful, very forgetful. And my kids will tell you I was the list keeper in my brain. I'm organized. I'm overly organized. I ran my business to a high, high six-figure business. On my own nobody helped me and I made more in my business than I did as a healthcare provider that's how much I was taken advantage of as in the healthcare industry so <clears throat> and that is why I chose to never ever ever work for somebody again ever nobody was ever gonna dictate my life and what I do for myself 
as a business owner, I get to make my own decisions. You see, I'm walking well. I'm numb, but I'm walking. I was able to get out of the couch without stopping. I was able to physically get up. I'm walking slow because I do get wobbly and I get a little dizzy, so I tend to pass out. But I was able to get up. And this is not dehydration, folks, just so you know. I'm fully aware what that is. That's not this. So I started having these symptoms the minute I got in on my own space and with my kids. But I hid it from them because I didn't want them to worry. I had had cancer before, twice. And I had noticed some physical symptoms coming on such as MS style, style symptoms because I refuse to say that I have anything. That's just how I live. I just refuse. I am not going to diagnose with anything because I don't have it. I might have the symptoms or the ailments, but those are meant to be healed. So I hit it. And I hit it up until May when I couldn't handle what was going on in my body anymore. And I remember having a conversation with my youngest son at breakfast. And he was asking me a question about having people over or whatever. And that was a, I was going through a lot of pain, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, and I was so sick all the time. Like they didn't know, right? Because you're hiding it. You're a mom. You don't let them see it. I didn't want them to worry. I didn't want them to think I was, you know, and you know, with cancer again. And then, and me, I just, I would never go to the doctor because I'm, I don't need to. And my own way of doing things. And if it's my time, it's my time. There is no artificial sustainability for me in this world. I will not do it. If it is my time, it'll be a natural process, period, end of story. And I remember saying across the breakfast table to my son, I am not okay. And he said, how? And I said, all of it, you name it, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. And I'm very close with my youngest in that way where we share like this very uh, more spiritual connection. So I feel like I'm close I, with all three, but like that, that's a unique connection I have with my youngest. And um, his response kind of jolted me. So I knew he wasn't ready to hear what was going on. So I kept it. I didn't say anything. And then I had called my first ex-husband, my first ex-husband, their father. He's the father of all three. And again, I hid it in full, but I did share with him that I am not okay. I'm not okay. There's something going on. I need to, I need to nip this. I need to take care of this. And I needed to be out of Illinois to be able to do that. I wasn't planning to leave permanently out of Illinois, but I was planning to be able to have a space where I can go back and forth because one of the biggest issues I have always had in my health was seasonal pain. I don't do well in the cold ever. No matter how many sweatshirts, how much, how many times I put the fireplace on, how many boots I own, how many winter coats, hats, gloves, it does something to my body that I cannot explain. So when you start to feel ill and you know the fall is coming up and you know the winter's coming up, you better get ahead of it if you're feeling what I was feeling at that time. So I, knew I needed to get something as a second home 
where I can kind of go back and forth once a month, couple times a month, so I can away for the weekend, so I can like work on this in a warmer climate without staying fully the entire time in a colder climate. So I shared this. And I got the usual, how I get from my first husband, ex-husband, is uh, is, it, is the C word back. That's, uh, that's oh my God, is the C word back? Is, is the C? And I said, I am unsure. It could be. I don't know. But I will tell you that when I, and he, and he knows that when I say I am not okay, that should have been his signal to know that I am not okay. Because the last thing I would ever do is call my first. I would have called my second ex-husband, but not my first. So for me to have that gut response, like I need to let him know because of our children, I felt compelled to do so. So I did. And what happened after that and the response I got, I thought I was being supported. I thought. I thought I was being supported. I thought there was an understanding. I thought he heard me, actually. I thought he heard me enough to go, hmm, all right, well, we'll get through this and kind of tell me what you need. And that's what I heard. And I had thought he heard me. But a month later, all that changed. All that changed. And suddenly, there was almost like this energetic ghosting of the energy, almost like I felt like I was out in this abyss by myself. And now I'm trying to figure out how to navigate it. And Walker and I were dating at this time. He was already living in Illinois in his apartment. So at least I had an outlet. I was able to have that love and support from the person I was dating while I was going through this all by myself because I didn't know what to do. I did not know what to do because I had not experienced these physical symptoms in this way. And I also had not experienced the mindset that I was having in this way. And if I can explain it to anyone who's had what I've experienced, it would be something along the lines of early dementia. And he will tell you, Walker will tell you, that's what I thought I was having. I thought I was having early stages of MS and dementia combined. I wasn't fully convinced it was the C word, but I was scared. <laughs> I was scared. Especially because my irritability factor and my frustration and my anger because of what I was going through day to day and I could not share it was beginning to really grow inside of me. But oddly, here is what I was up against. That had I said that this was really what I finally was comfortable with sharing, and had I spoken the truth and had I said what was really going on with me, there's a belief system that if you don't have a diagnosis, you don't have it. You're making it up. You're exaggerating. You're looking for attention. This isn't really happening. It's all in your head. You you know, it, it's just you're making excuses like because I've had that before. I've, I've been through that. Remember, I've already gone through cancer twice, right? So not to mention, I spent years and years and years of struggling with these ailments and my mind because I stayed in Illinois when I never wanted to be there to begin with. I've been wanting to leave Illinois since I was young because I, I don't do well in winter climates. But when you 
have a life and you meet a partner and you get married and you have children together, your dreams and goals of doing other things doesn't always come to, to be because you do what's right by your family. You choose things for your family. You choose things for your children, right? You choose things to do well by your spouse. You do, you know, if they have a career, if they have family and they have all these things, it doesn't matter what I wanted as a mom. Had no, no, my, 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 what I wanted didn't matter at all, at all, because you got to do what you have to do for your family. So I have struggled with the cold weather for years, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. But there comes a time in your life when you reach a certain age that that catches up to you, especially when you're going through an illness, a disease process, a disruption in the body, energy being thrown at you in all different ways, right? There's just this, I'm sorry, I'm moving around so much. I can't, they're screaming outside and I, the lighting and because I'm so thin, I know it looks like my hair is thick, but it's not. If, if I was to pull my hair I have it styled just to cover the areas that are super thin, almost looking like it's balding, just so I feel good about it. But you can see my whole crown if I was to shine a light. It would just, it looks like I just have hair coming out from this almost bald styled area. <coughs> so. I was already, I was already there, everyone. I was already there two years ago, knowing this was going to start for me. And I did what I can at the time. We go through life doing the best we damn can. We just do. And so this situation where I thought everyone understood and everyone heard me understood. And it's my fault. And I take full responsibility for not speaking my truth, for hiding what I was going through, for hiding the physical ailments I was having to, to hide this uh, feeling of like this early stage dementia, dementia, these things. And almost all the symptoms I was having before my thyroid cancer, they were all there before I even got the diagnosis. All the symptoms that happened the second time, I thought, do I have this again? All those symptoms are there. So it's a trickery, right? Because even in the real world of medicine, it takes forever sometimes to get a diagnosis. Months, years, sometimes it's even misdiagnosed. So this is normal. This is normal. And so that experience of me not speaking my truth really hit home for me. And that created another life-altering, life-changing event for me a few months later, which I'm not going to speak about in this video. But it did because the pain I was going through and the, 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 you know, when you're going through something, if anyone knows anything about early stage dementia, the first thing that goes, especially for a woman only over 50, especially for a woman who had already just gone through menopause, which is me, I was menopausal and moods change. Mood, moods are very difficult to navigate very difficult, no matter how much ashwagandha I took, because there was just a lot up, down, up, down, up, down. I just came off a divorce and then suddenly I'm sick. And then all these things are happening, right? Life's changing. And then I'm trying to have, I have a, you know, sort of a dating experience going on for somebody who's, I'm, you know, <laughs> so supportive, so supportive, not to mention very well versed in medical, the medical world and the spiritual world. And he was a master healer and just, 
He's been a physical trainer his whole life. He wrote a nutritionist book. Like he's very well versed in the world. We have this, we share the exact same loves. I never thought I'd meet that mirror, right? So there was a lot going on that led to the next event. And what does this have to do with yesterday is that my physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual disruption that was happening during that time right after I got divorced didn't allow me to grieve that marriage. I thought I had healed from it by just being strong and forgiving and taking accountability and, you know, loving this person from afar still. So for me, the ending of that marriage uh, created this void inside of me that can't ever be filled. It can't. And Walker knows this. He's fully aware and he's so supportive of it. In fact, if it wasn't for him, I probably would never have gotten through what I went through yesterday. But he's so understanding and he really, really understands me. So it helps me be able to heal not just what I'm going through physically, but emotionally and mentally, which happened to come to the surface yesterday. And that is because today, October 5th, 2024, would have been mine and my ex-husband's 11-year wedding anniversary. And for some reason, folks, this one hit hard for me. Hit hard. It hit hard. And... When you have uh, like a deep love for somebody because you never had that before and then it's gone and your trust is taken, it doesn't mean you stop loving them. It just means it's hard to lift it side by side, right? It's hard to stay in something when it becomes toxic. But I realized yesterday it's a void that just that idea of family I had is gone forever. That idea, that family unit, that home, that life I built is gone. It's gone. And I can't ever get it back. There's no rewinding the clock. There's no doing things different. There's just, there's just nothing you can do but accept and learn and grow and evolve from there. And Walker knows this and he accepts me for that. And he still loves me through that. And he's fully aware that he can never fill that void for me. Nobody can. Not even myself. But I can heal it. And put it and cultivate it in a space that reminds me of all the good and all the happy times. And it lessens the blow and it lessens the pain. And my ex-husband knows. I mean, he knows I've been very open about this. In our healing, I mean, I don't know about now, but I'm just saying he knows that I've told him after, I think a year later, and a couple times in conversations after that up until, I don't even know how long ago, but he knows. 
he knows. So uh, that's a tough pill to swallow, especially when you're going through a massive detox and you're purging and you're trying to get to the root because you know pain is stored as trauma in the body, which presents as symptoms. And anxiety and fear is worry about the future. So there's anxiety going on yesterday in fear because you are anxiety because you fear the future. And then there's all this physical pain going on because I haven't healed from the past and that trauma has been stored in the body and I was unaware of it. I thought I healed until yesterday. And I lost it. I fucking lost it. I was on that damn bathroom floor throwing up next to the toilet, laying on a pillow with him covering me in a blanket. And he sat with me and he held my hair back and he walked me through it and he talked me through it. And I felt so alone, even with him there. And I had to process and purge that up until today. That deep love you have for somebody who's no longer in your life. That unconditional deep love is something that really is therapeutic and healing when you don't have any resentment or any anger. But that doesn't mean that the memories don't still linger from time to time. That creates a jolt in you. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. Because I'm going to heal this once and for all. I will find joy in other ways, right? In my experience with Walker. And the void won't be filled, but you know what? I'll cultivate it, and I'll create new memories, right? And it's okay. So once I purged and cleared that this morning, <clears throat> by noon my pain was gone today. Now I wouldn't say forever, I mean, but for today. Because remember, I said there's good days and bad days when you're doing this. But today would have been 11 years, and my physical body is, is recalibrated. It's stable right now. I'm walking better. I'm still numb and tingling, but I'm walking today. I haven't been glitching in my memory. Uh, I'm not shaking. I'm coughing, yes, but um, I can raise my voice. It's still raspy and vibrating like that, but I can. I don't have overproduction of phlegm today. I'm. I have not thrown up all day. Um, so that's a win for me after what I've been going through, especially since the beginning of September. So that's a win for me. So for those of you who have been through something similar or are going through something now or are about to embark on that, please know that you just need to trust yourself. But you need to forgive yourself and you need to allow yourself to sit in the dark sometimes. You need to allow yourself to sit in the pain. You need to allow yourself the time to heal because there is no fast way to get to your healing. There's not. There's not. It is a friggin' journey all by itself. All by itself. 
every little piece needs to be unraveled like an onion, every layer like an onion until you get to the root. And once the root is derooted, only then can you plant new seeds to grow something fresh and new. Give yourself grace. Be patient with yourself. But most importantly, allow yourself the ability. You owe it to yourself to forgive yourself. I owed it to myself to forgive myself. I owed it to myself to say, I am not living in a emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual purgatory anymore. I am doing this once and for all. This is not what I signed up for in this lifetime. I signed up for a wonderful, beautiful life, and I am going to get it. But I can't rush. I can't. Not with the childhood and the and the life I had and the, uh, you know, the the family tree, the lineage, the marriages, the relationships I've had, the the issues, the and the kids, and the, just all these things. You know, work, business. People, co-workers, uh, my business networks, uh, my audience. Like, I, it, there is no fast way. There is just is no fast way. So it's a must for me. And I surrender it to the universe because I have God in my heart. I, have, I am a being of God. I am the divine. And I have my own innate truth, and that's all that matters to me right now in this very moment. In this present moment, I only am focused on the now. And I am very grateful, and I thanked what happened to me yesterday over and over all day today. I am very grateful that I went down for the count yesterday. I am grateful that I had this unhealed trauma come to the surface because I didn't even know it existed. I am grateful that I'm aware of the great memories I had and I am grateful that I'm aware of the upsetting memories I had so I can once for all face them, cry about them, work through them, speak through them, and transcend them for good. For good. I send love from afar. I send love to my ex-husband. And that's good. Because there's nothing more I want in this world than for my ex-husband to be happy. And that includes my first one, by the way. They, uh, go. Go do you. Go be happy. But it's also my time. It's my time to be happy. And it's my time to be happy by telling my own story with my own narrative and my own truth and not allow everyone else to decide what my story is and then go narrate it for me. I am done living that life. Thank you for being here.